Rabotai, I'd like to start tonight with a tremendous update that I know many of our listeners were waiting for. Baruch Hashem, the billboard story was 100% verified by a very prominent menahel of a yeshiva here in Flatbush. Right down to the detail, mamash. The only difference that came out after the complete verification is that it did not happen in LA, like I mentioned in the clip, but rather it happened in Toronto. Every other detail he verified to the source to be emet. Last countdown, four, three, two, one. Zero, not zero, Coke zero. Parashat Shemot. Rabotai, we spoke last week in Parashat Vayichi on the incredible Yisod of Reb Chaim Velazhener in his Sefer Nefesh HaChaim. What he refers to as the Sigula HaGadol Biyoter. The great concept of En Od Milvado. Where a person literally puts into his heart that there's no other force, no other power in the world other than Hashem. And I am in Hashem's hands. That person becomes untouchable. No power, no force in the world can have any shlita on him, can have any effect on him. He is by Yadayim Shal Abba. Now we brought out this, he saw tremendously when we spoke on Parashat Vayichi, mentioning that incredible Midrash of Yosef and the brothers on the way back from Ma'arat the Machpela as they passed by the boar that they threw him in 30 some odd years earlier. And it was at that point that Yosef stood at the edge of the boar and he told his brothers, Atem chashavtem alay lira'a. Elohim chasheva tova. You thought I was thinking about what you did to me in this bore? I was thinking about what Hashem did to me in this bore. He took me from the pit to the palace. He was with me all along. And therefore, no matter what you planned against me, you couldn't do a thing to me. Because I was bayadaim shel Abba. En od milavado. And that was the note that we closed Sefer Bereshit. That was our Hazak Hazak Venit Hazek. And now we open up the book of Shemot. And right away from the beginning, in the very first parasha, we have here again the calling of the great Balbitachon of Klal Yisrael next up on the list. None other than the future Manhig Moshe Rabbeinu. And Moshe Rabbeinu is taught from the very beginning, from the first conversations, Kiviachol, with Bore Olam by the Sne. Moshe Rabbeinu is taught the Yisod of En Od Milavado. You know where we see this? Bore Olam tells Moshe Rabbeinu, Eheye Asher Eheye. Now you look to me and you say, wait one second, Rabbi, where do you see? In Eye Asher Eye En Od Milavado. Is that really what Bore Olam was teaching Moshe Rabbeinu at that moment of an incredible statement? A statement that shook the world. Eye Asher Eye. Says Bore Olam, Moshe, En Od Milavado. There is no one else but me. Really? Where do you see that in the words? Eye Asher Eye. My Rebbe. He told me that the great Yid HaKadosh from Peshiska, Zechet Sadik Lebracha, he was a Baal Ruach HaKodesh. I can tell you many stories about the Yid HaKadosh that I heard from my Rebbe. Mamash open, in the open, Baal Ruach HaKodesh. To the extent that there was a famous Misa, he sent one of the Hasidim, out to a great tzaddik in Mezhbush. I believe it's Rabbi Arami Mezhbush. But he sent it to a great tzaddik in Mezhbush. And he sent him with a shulichut. And with a certain regards. And the Yid HaKadosh told the Hasid, when you get there, he's going to question if you're telling him the truth. 
So tell him over this pshat about Rebbe and Antoninus and the famous Gemara, what they had on their tables and what they ate. And tell him that he had a question and his question was so and so. And he came up with a great answer and tell the rabbi that his answer is emet. And this Hasid went to Mezhbush back to the great Sadiq there and gave over this incredible grus. He gave him over this incredible regards from the Yidah Kadosh, Mipishiska. And sure enough, I believe it was Rabbi Aaron Mezhbush, but if I'm not mistaken, he said, I don't believe you. Such a great rabbi would send someone as small as me a regards. He says, yes. And he also told me that you would doubt it. So he told me to tell you the following. He told me to tell you that you were thinking about this Gemara of Rebbe and Antoninus. And you had a kasha on the Gemara. And this was your question. And this was your great chidush of an answer. The tzaddik from Mezhbush began to be ro'ed. He tittered. And he screamed. And he said, I, you know, B'chayai, a lashon of swearing, ke'ilu. I never told anyone this pshat. This was just here in my head. How did the tzaddik, the Yida Kadosh, know this? He was a Baruch HaKodesh. My Rebbe told me that the Yida Kadosh mi Pishtischa, he's the one that touches the words, Eheye Asher Eheye, as En Od Milvado. Really, how is that? Where do you see that? You know where you see it from? Eheye is a conglomeration of two words. It's the Shem Hashem, of course, we know that. But it's an, also a message. Eheye, Ani Yihye. I will be, says Borel to Moshe Rabbeinu. Eheye, Ani Yihye. I will be Asher Eheye, with the one that says that he wants to be with me. Ani Yihye. With the one that says, Ani Yemashem. If you want to be with me, I will be with you. And you'll need nobody else. En od melavado. The pshat of the great Yid HaKadosh mi Persiska. Eye asher eye. A sod. Ani hiye. With the one that's going to say, Ani Yemashem. Say you want to be with me, and I'll be with you. And then you need Nothing else. No matter what's going on in life, no matter what sarot the person is going through, no matter what difficulties a person has, just close your eyes and say, Eheye asher eheye. I want to be with the one that wants to be with me. I want to be with Hashem, and Hashem wants to be with me. I'm with Eloka. Ve'a Eloka iti. At that moment, you're untouchable. And Od Milavado. Wow. Wow. From one parashat to the next. From parashat Vayichi, Yosef HaTzadik, Elohim Chasheva Alay Litova, En Od Milvado, I'm untouchable. No matter what you are conspiring, straight to the next parashat, the beginning of Galut. Moshe Rabbeinu, the encounter by the Sne, Bore Olam tells him, Moshe, I'm with you. You're with me. You have nothing to worry about. Go to Paro and say, Eheye Asher Eheye. I'm with Hashem and Hashem's with me. Ani with the one that says Ani En Od Milvado. You'll be untouchable. Paro cannot lay a finger on you. Wow. Rabotai. Please, open your hearts tonight. Let these words in. You have no idea where life can go if we begin to live. Every time we encounter another paro, every time we encounter another challenge, another yetzahara, another ta'ava, another test, Another tsara lo aleinu velo alechem, but has v'shalom. So many people are bitsarot. So many are suffering. So many are sick. And each time another COVID comes up. Vayakom melech hadash al mitzrayim asher lo yada the last COVID. Even with the last vaccines 
and it's not even helping anymore. It's one big joke. And it's dangerous. We don't know what's going on. And there's only one that can help us. Only one. Only one. I hope you realize at this point, everybody is out to lunch. Everybody's out to lunch. Nobody knows nothing. The governments don't know nothing. The doctors have no clue. They'll tell it to you straight. They don't know. The answer is this is a new strain. We don't know. Will the old vaccine work? We don't know. The new vaccine? We don't know. The booster? We have no idea. What about the drip? The plasma? No, maybe not for this strand, the last strand. The plasma is not going to work. Monica, click, 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 cloning. For heaven's sake, is it going to work for this time? We don't know. It worked for Delta and its grandfather, but we don't know if it's going to work for the Tolda. What's going on? Nobody knows. Borea Olam is making a galechta. You know what that means? Et asher hit alalti I didn't just take you out of Egypt. I made a mockery out of Egypt. I'm going to make a mockery out of the les galut before I take you out again. Because Yitziat Mitzrayim was the protocol of the final galut as well, the final geulah. And exactly the way we left Egypt, the story is going to come back and replay itself. When Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim, He made a mockery out of Paro, a mockery out of Egypt, who was the superpower at the time. So too in the final Geulah, Hashem's going to make a mockery out of the Goim, a mockery out of the superpowers. No one knows their head from their toes. Till finally we're going to come back to the realization. Anirishon. Why can't we get this message? The famous Pasuk in Hazino, Ani, Ani, Hu, Velo, Acher, Ve'en Elohim, Imadi. Ani, Ani, Hu, says Borei Olam. All I'm asking you to do is look up. Look up. Remember who you are. Remember who you belong to. I'm your Abba. Jump into my hands. Abba, ehye asher ehye, en od milvado, ani ye itcha atati ye iti. I don't need anything else after that. Ani ba yadaim shal Abba. That's it. That's where it begins and that's where it ends. En od milvado. The message that Borei Olam gives. Right there at the Senet to Moshe Rabbeinu, as he goes out to Paro. Just say, eh, yashir, eh, yeah. and then you're untouchable. Wow. Rabotai, every day, I'm lucky enough to be here in the morning, sitting with Reb Cheskel and a few tzaddikim. We have about eight, ten guys in the kolel. We learn every day. After the morning shiurim of six and seven, we do yorucha be'iyun. After we daven, we have a morning kolel. For guys that are Bnei Aliyah, that really came to a new understanding of the world and Bore Olam, it's called Bitachon. Ah, the Bet Levi, the Sefer of the Bet Levi, I actually have it right here. The Sefer of the Bet Levi Bitachon, these are the essays of the Rav Mibrisk, Rav Yosheber Mibrisk, Salavechik, the great Bet Levi, the grandfather of the Brisker of, the father of Reb Chaim Brisker, the great Reb Chaim, the Bet Levi, we learn him every day for an hour. And then after that, we do the Shmirat HaLashon, and after that, we review the Yorucha, and we're here sitting every day from 9 to 11. Anyone that wants to come and join, our doors are open. The Boys Club, it is an enjoyment. I look forward to that two hours, I would say almost more than anything else in my day. It's such an uplifting learning. And as we're learning the Bet Levi with the Baal ha footnotes on the bottom, Harav Ferser, it was over there that we came across this amazing idea. I'm going to share this with you tonight on the concept of Enod Milvado, Eheye Asher Eheye. Because the Baal ha footnote over here, Harav Ferser, he writes something that's incredible. He says that in truth, 
This great Sigula Nora'a from Reb Chaim Velazhen of the Nefesh HaChaim, the concept of saying, En od milvado, en od milvado, and you get it into your heart and you get it into your bones to the extent that mamash, you feel it and you're untouchable. There's no other force in the world other than Hashem and you're in Hashem's hands and therefore no one else can touch you. This Yisod, he says, was already previously grandfathered way back when, times of the Rishonim, back to the days of the Rambam. Maimonides himself, in his classical work, Moren Nevuchim, the guide to the perplexed, the Rambam writes this concept. And I'll be honest with you, no matter how clear of speech you were gifted, no matter what type of koach hahezber, one was gifted to give over Torah and information with the greatest of clarity. I don't believe you'll do justice to the words I'm about to read to you inside in the Rambam itself. Va'ani mitzatet l'shono. I want to quote to you the very words of the Rambam. You want to hear en od milvado? You want to hear the Yid HaKadosh from Peshischa? You want to hear his take on Eheye Asher Eheye? Listen to this Rambam. He wrote this almost a thousand years ago. This, these words are Nora ve'ayom. This is a life changer. You can never live the same after you hear what I'm about to tell you now. Rabotai, please. Tikabilu na'asev Listen to these words. Says the Rambam. He begins with a pasuk, a famous pasuk in Parashat Vayelech. The pasuk goes like this, and I'm going to read it. Ve'amar bayomahu. You know, a lot of times Bayomahu refers to Bayomahu Yiye Hashem Echadush Moechad. Bayomahu a lot of times refers to that classical great day of the coming of Mashiach, the Ikvita de Mashiach, the times we're in now. I'm not saying it always refers to those times, but many times Bayomahu Yiye Hashem Echadush Moechad. The Amar Bayomahu, and they will say at that great time, Hello. Al kien elokai bikir bi, because we don't have Hashem inside of us or amongst us. Misauni haraot ha'ele, we are finding these terrible things are happening. People are going to come to the realization, says the pasuk in Parashat Vayelech. You know why these terrible things are becoming on us. You know why these tsarot are coming at us. You know why it's not slowing down. You know why every week they're coming up with a new strain. You know why this is happening. Because Borei Olam, Eloka, lo bikirbeinu. He's not amongst us. En Elokai bikirbi. Misauni haraota ele. It's because Hashem is not amongst us. Or maybe, Bikir B. Hashem is not inside of me. I'm not connected to Him. If I'd be connected to Him, I would be untouchable. But because I don't have Him inside, because I'm not connected, Oh, Matzauni, Haraota Ele, I found Hasvi Shalom. He says he found these Tzarot. Now listen to what the Rambam is going to say on this pasuk in Parashat Vayelech. Says the Rambam, Shono, Ha'ish Hashalem, the complete Jew, the proper Jew. Bahasagato, in his perception, Asher lo yasur sichlo me'eloka tamid, the Jew that does not take his mind off of Hashem. Constantly, he constantly lives with Hashem in mind. As long as your mind is on Hashem, Hashem's hashgacha is on you. Breathe. As long as your mind is thinking about Hashem, you're connected to Hashem. And when you're connected to him, he's connected to you. As long as you're connected to him, his hashgacha. What's a mashgiach? Someone who's watching. He's watching you. 
He's taking care of you. He's protecting you. You're untouchable. Now listen to the words. You thought that was something? <laughs> Wait, listen to the next line of the Rambam. Moren Nevuchim says the Rambam, when your mind is on Hashem and you don't take your mind off of Hashem, Hashem, His Hashgacha is on you. Ve'i efshar, she az la'ishahu min mine haraot. It's impossible for anything bad to come or happen to this person. As long as his mind is on Hashem, Hashem's with him, he's untouchable. No evil, no bad, nothing of tragedy, nothing of bad can come to this person. Why? Because his mind is on Hashem. And therefore Hashem's hashgacha is on him. He's untouchable. But listen to the words of the Rambam, E.F. Shar. Come on, English. Impossible. It is impossible, says the Rambam. At that moment, when your mind is on Hashem, you're connected to Him, He's connected to you. Nothing. It's impossible. Nothing can happen to that person at that moment of any bad. Ki hu im eloka. Because He is with God. The eloka imo. And God is with God. But then the Ramam goes on to say, Aval, Behesir Machshavto Me'eloka. But if a person takes his mind off of Hashem, as Nivdal Me'eloka, he separates himself from Hashem. Ha'eloka Nivdal Mimenu. God in return separates from him. The who as mezuman chas v'shalom, at that moment he becomes exposed and opened. He's inviting, God forbid, l'chol ra she'efshar she'yimse'uhu. Chas v'shalom. I don't even want to translate that. And then the Rambam ends his piece in Moren Nevuchim. Rabotai, open your hearts, listen to these words. He says, Unbelievable. As long as a person, his mind is on Hashem, he's connected to Hashem, he's untouchable. But then, if he takes his mind off of Hashem, he's mufkar le mikre, mezuman le echol ke God forbid. The minute he stops thinking about Hashem, he puts his mind to other people, other forces, other places, other helpers, other hookups. Other things that he thinks may help him, other than Hashem, he becomes exposed. He can be eaten like an animal. Like an animal. It's unbelievable. Because at that moment he was separated from God. And therefore he's open fish bait. But somebody who God is inside of him, who is thinking about Hashem, Lo yiga bo ra kol ikar. No evil can touch him in any way. He's untouchable. Ki chol mi shehechan et atzmo. Anyone that prepares himself. Ad she shafa alav hasechel hahu. That he's able to have that hashpa of this understanding that him and Hashem are one. He's thinking about Hashem. Tidbakbo immediately connects to him at the moment that he thinks about Hashem, connects back to him, Hahashgacha, Hashem's protection. The Yimni Menu Haraot Kulam. And at that moment, it holds back any bad or evil that might have came to him. He's now no longer touchable. Did you hear this, Ramba? Do you hear what the Rambam is telling us, Rabotai? Did you hear the words that the Rambam said? Ki hu im eloka. Veha eloka imo. When you're with Hashem, when your mind is on Hashem, Hashem is with you and His hashgacha, His protection is on you and you are untouchable. En od milavado. This is Unbelievable. 
You know what the Rambam is telling me here? The Rambam is telling me here something very powerful. The Rambam is telling me here that Borei Olam gave you the greatest gift, your mind. The mind is the conduit, the vehicle that connects you to Hashem, your mind, your machshava. What you think is where you're at. Where your mind is, is where the person is. A healthy mind, healthy person. A not healthy mind, lo aleinu lo aleichem, has v'shalom. A very unhealthy person. Where your mind is, is where the person is. When your mind is on Hashem, you're with Hashem. Simply put, that is dveikut b'ashem. Now what does this mean, guys? Does this mean that a person has to walk around all day holding a sign in front of his eyes, Shiviti Hashem l'negdi tamid, Hashem, I'm with you, Hashem, I'm with you, Hashem, I'm with you. Does it mean that every minute he has to be saying to himself, I'm with Hashem, I'm with Hashem, I'm with Hashem. I don't believe that that's what the Rambam means. I don't think that that's even what Hashem wants. I think what it means is, that no matter what's going on in your mind, Hashem is always your mental answer to everything. I'm with Him. He's taking care of me. Yeah, but you know what phone call I just got? Mishimu'a ra'a lo yira. You know that pasuk in Tehillim? I'm not worried. Hashem is with me. He's protecting me. I'm with him, and he's with me. En od milavado. I read the Rambam. I saw the pshat of the Yid HaKadosh, Ehei Asher Eye, which according to my Rebbe, he was telling me that this is the vart, Ki hu im eloka, vah eloka imo. Eheye, ani yihye, Asher Eye. With the one that says, ani yihye. I'm with the one that wants to be with me. Eheye asher eheye. En od milvado. The Yid HaKadosh. The Rambam. Abba, ani bayadayim shalcha. How many times we had issues in life that we were able to stop for a minute and say, you know what? Wait one second. Ani ben shal melech. Ani bayadayim shal abba. I close my eyes. Hashem tamid. Yud vavke. Abba, I'm holding your hand. You're holding my hand. I'm in your arms. That's it. Hashem's going to take care of me. Eheye asher eheye. The first thing Bore Olam tells Moshe Rabbeinu, you're going to Paro? Paro is the representation of all evil. We know that from Chazal. Chazal tell us that Paro is the semel of the Yetzer Hara. Adarabba, the Sifre Musar tell us, examine the way Paro handled with Klal Yisrael and how he got them to do things they didn't want to do. Even the original Avodah, he, so to speak, drew them into in a very sneaky, underhanded way. Perach, Paro, Pera. That is the Yetzer Hara. How do you deal with the Yetzer Hara? Study Paro, you'll understand the ways of Yetzer Hara. Says Borei Olam, Moshe Rabbeinu, you're going out to Paro, you're going in front of your Yetzer Hara. Just tell him, Eheye, Asher, Eheye, you're untouchable. I'm with Abba, Abba's with me, and Od Milavado, the Rambam. Ani im Eloka, ve Eloka imi iti. That's it. This is a... This is tremendous. An emunah pshuta, which is from the, what he calls the Rambam, the Adam HaShalem, he calls it. This is the Adam HaShalem. In the old country, we used to call this Jack, emunah pshuta. The old timers. There was no concern. <laughs> By them, everything was Hashem. The old grandmothers, everything was Hashem. Everything was Hashem. I remember growing up, my first, second year Bet Midrash in Israel, I used to go to my grandmother, I lay shalom for Shabbat, my father's mother, in Ramat Eshkol. She couldn't find her glasses. 
She sits down at the table. She starts talking to Borei Olam. Borei Olam, I need my glasses. I can't find my glasses. I want to be able to say Birkat Amazon to you at the end of the Seuda. It was Shabbat. I used to go to her for Shabbatot. I want to go and say Birkat Amazon to you at the end of Shabbat. I need my glasses. I need to see the words. Please show me my glasses. Help me find my glasses. A few minutes later, she gets up. She starts looking. Oh, I found it. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Borei Olam. I found my glasses. I watched this. I saw this. It's my grandmother. And your grandmother was the same. And your grandfather was the same. They used to talk to the Abish all day. All day. It was, a, it was an ongoing relationship. It was an ongoing conversation. What do you mean? Ani im eloka ve eloka iti. Eheye asher eheye enod milvado. Who else am I going to talk to? Like my mother used to tell me, don't waste your time with the cashier. Ask for a manager. What are you wasting your time? Go to the people that make the decisions. There's only one that makes the decisions. There's only one that's in control. There's only one koach in the world. And od milavado. By Har Sinai, Borei Olam comes down with myriads of angels. And he pulls back the vilon. And he says to Klal Yisrael, look. Look, there's no one up there but me. All you see, he let them see till the 950th level in Shamayim, Kisei Kavod. He says, Look, that's it. Look, I'm letting you see. I'm letting you look behind the curtain. I'm showing you that in the heavens, there's nothing, no one, no other Koach, no other force but me. That's it. Tell your children what your human fleshy eyes just witnessed. Tell them. Like this for years to come. They'll never have any other expectations other than Boreola. They won't go to rely on anybody. They won't go to make up to anyone, look up to anyone. They'll only look up to Boreola. Eheye asher eheye. En od milvado. Ay, ay, ay. This is the bitachon ha me'ule, as the way the Beta Levi brings it. This is the real Baal bitachon, the one that lives with Hashem. And many of us remember the old folk, that to them this was common. This was mamash, what we would call today big madregot. To them, it was day-to-day -day life. They lived with Borela, they talked to Hashem. Everything, the grandma, the grandmothers, the babas, the zaydas, they used to sit there Shabbat Friday afternoon. They were cooking. What did the safta say? Bore olam, help me. I want the food to be magnificent for Shabbat Kodesh. Shabbat Kodesh. They used to clean the house. I remember my grandmother doing the sponger. And they used to say, I'm doing this. Lichvod Shabbat Kodesh. I had a lady that used to live across the street from me. Im Nuri. Sadeket. Sadeket, Sadeket, Sadeket. I used to come out Friday afternoons. I would make excuses just to find a reason to come outside. I wasn't doing anything. I was spying. I used to move my garbage cans around. They weren't picking up garbage on Friday. I used to do all ridiculous things. I used to watch. She stood there with her aide. This woman was in her 90s. Some say she was older, but we'll leave it. But she was definitely in her 90s, okay? She was outside cleaning, sweeping the front steps. And everyone heard her say, I'm cleaning the steps, getting ready for Shabbat Malka for Shabbat. I, I, I just wanted to see it. <laughs> I wanted to remember what that looked like. I wanted to remember the people that once lived this as Pashut. And her aide, her aide, would tell her, stop! And she would scream at her. Nothing she would tell her would stop her from sweeping and cleaning the steps. After that, she would start scrubbing the floor. Like, the woman's not here. Shabbat's coming. She's telling Abba, I'm getting my house ready for Shabbat. Shabbat's coming. L'chvod Shabbat. It's the way they lived. Eheye asher eheye. I'm with you, you're with me, that's it. I don't need anything else. Enod milvado. 
And therefore, when a person, has shalom, is found in a situation that they're suffering, stop for a minute. Take a step back. Sit down in a quiet room. Close your eyes. Shiviti Hashem Negdi Tamit. Look at that Yud Kei Vav Kei and reach out and grab it in your mind. And say, Abba, I just grabbed onto your hand. I'm with you. I'm relying on no one else but you. Anim Eloka, Eloka Iti. Now you're with me. I'm with you. Ehe Yashar Ehe. En od milvado. En od milvado. Ani bayadayim shal Abba. I am now untouchable. And if you do this for real, you will physically feel a certain something. I don't know how to describe this to you, but a certain... <sighs> like somebody took these two cinder blocks off your shoulders. And you just feel warm for a minute. As if somebody just gave you this hug. Ah! Hey, hey. Rabotai, do you remember... I told you over on Misa, not so long ago, about six months ago, when Teddy and Lee Cohen and myself, we went out to Reb Shaila for the first time. We went for the art site. It was an experience to us. Oh my gosh. Lo you uman ki yusufa. You remember that story? You remember I told you that the first time we went, we didn't know better. So we, you know, we ended up going to Amsterdam. Oh, what a mistake. But we were there with a whole crew of about another hundred Hasidim. We were all going together. Amsterdam. I don't want, maybe I shouldn't say this on camera. It's not a place that they love Jews. Let's just leave it at that. And I'm telling you what we saw there. And as we finally made it from one side of the airport to another side of the airport, it was like going through border control of countries. And they were barking at us. And we mamash, we hid in the middle of a hundred Hasidim. It was the greatest, <laughs> it was the greatest camouflage. And we made our way through that border to the other side. We're waiting for the connecting flight. There was only one flight connecting that day, leaving that airport in Amsterdam, going to Rabshaila, going to Hungary, going to Budapest. And I know, I told you the Maisa, you heard it already so many times. Someone just told me they put it in a book. Unbelievable. But the point over here is, we walked up to the lady and we asked her, please, can you verify our seats? Because we'd like to get on. We'd like to even get an upgrade if possible. And she put our names in the computer and she says, you guys don't have seats. I know, I told you guys the story. I know I told you the story. I get it. We said, what? What are you talking about? Of course we have seats. We call up our travel agent from Amsterdam. What's going on? We have no... He says, what do you mean? I put you in the computer. You're there in the computer. She says, I'm sorry, I'm on my computer. You have no seats. Oh, I found your names. You're on standby. But this flight is booked. We don't know if you're going to make the flight. When's the next one? The next flight is like tonight. Oh, we're going to miss the art site. <laughs> What's the point? I sat down. I said, Abba. I'm in your hands. And on Milvado. So Teddy, come over here. Lee, come on. Let's, let's talk to the one in charge. We're wasting our time with the airline rep. Come sit down over here. And we started to talk. We started, and on Milvado, and on Milvado, and on Milvado. Again, again, and again. We're going to get on this flight. Hashem is in charge. Ani am Eloka, the Eloka Iti. And on Milvado. No, Chama, let's say it again. Abba! You're the one that's going to get me to carry steer. You're the one. Nobody else. Just then, we hear our names being called over the PA system. The three of us, the three stooges jump up. We run up to the, uh, we run up to the lady from the airline. And she says, you're not going to believe this. The airline's computer just went down. It crashed. Now we don't know who's on the flight, who's not on the flight. She says, you know what? I have no idea who's on the waiting list anymore except for you three guys. So I'm going to give you a ticket. Here it is. Tonight's show and tell. Here it is. Look at my Munkatra passport. Look at this. This is the ticket. She hands me a blank 
paper and with her pen. She writes, Ben Susan with my seat number and row. This is the, this is the Grayser ticket, the blank ticket, along with our baggage claim for our baggage stapled to the ticket. Here it is. She hands me this ticket. Are you looking at the Galechta? Are you looking at the mockery? The joke that Hashem made out of them, guys. What are you wasting time? Come to Abba. Anim Eloka. Ve Eloka Iti. She hands me this ticket, a blank paper with handwritten Ben Susan. She hands Soror to Teddy and Cohen to Lee. She opens up the door right in front of her desk. Now, meanwhile, everybody is online waiting to line up to get onto the plane. She says, you guys might as well go on first. I can't put you on the regular line because you don't have a regular ticket. You have a Munkacha passport. We said, so we're getting on now? She says, yeah. We were worried if we're going to get on this flight at all. We ended up getting on first before anybody. We're sitting there with this galachta. Look at this ticket. Look at it. And oh, yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't say Ben Shushan here. It says En Od Milvado. It says Hashem Gadol. That's what it says. Here. It says here on the bottom. It says Kama Tov Hashem. That's what it says. That's what it says. And, and don't forget the baggage. The baggage. The baggage claim. Don't forget. They stapled it to make sure that we we don't lose it with the very. They stapled it to the ticket. They stapled it to the ticket. You see the ticket. This is the ticket that got us to Karastir. Because if we're with Hashem, Hashem's with you. Psh, unbelievable. You live a different life. You live a different life. If Abba's the answer in your mind, then the Wi-Fi is working and you're connected. And as long as the Wi-Fi is working and you're connected, as long as you're connected to Him, He's connected to you. Don't lose that connection. Because chas shalom, that moment of shikha could open up chas shalom to different things. We should never want to go there. Ay, 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 enon novado. Well, tonight's the night of hochachot, huh? Psh. Rabotai, I want to end with this amazing maisa that my Rebbe, Rameh Shalom, just told me a few days ago. And I'm hoping that this shows you emunap shuta of a Jew. It doesn't matter what your past look like. Inside of us, we have the makeup to reach heights of emunam bitachon sometimes in an instant. Sometimes in an instant, because we have the makeup. We already have the router. All we need to do is flick it on and we're connected to the Wi-Fi signal immediately. My Rebbe told me that there was a Rav who used to go around the jails and he used to visit the Jews in jail. He used to give them chizuk. There was one particular Jew in jail who was bichlal, secular, not religious at all. But here he is. The rabbi comes around, he begins to speak to him, gives him chizuk, cheers him up, starts giving him purpose and life to want to live again for. And as they get closer, little by little, he starts to learn with this Jewish inmate in jail. And the rabbi has such a hashpa on this guy that little by little he starts to become religious. He starts keeping Shabbat. He starts eating only kosher meals. He starts actually putting on tefillin every day. He's saying Kriyat Shema now every day. And the rabbi is so impressed how this guy became Balchuva so sincere and so quick. He decides, he comes back one week to the jail. He's going to give him a book on Hilchot Shabbat in his language. Simply written, simple halachot. Let him work with it. And this Jewish inmate, this prisoner in jail, he starts going through the book and he's reading the book. Day and night, he's going over the halachot. The next week, the rabbi comes back to visit him and he says, Rabbi, 
you know, in the book that you gave me on the Hilchot Shabbat, there's the master key of how I'm going to get out of jail. You gave me the key to get out of jail. The rabbi says, what do you mean? Your sentence is for 15 years. You're still in your first year. <laughs> Where are you going? He says, no, no, don't you understand? The book that you gave me, Hilchot Shabbat, in it was the secret, the key, for me to get out of jail. The rabbi says, what are you talking about? He opens up the sefer and he says, look, you see the famous Ma'amar Chazal, the famous Gemara about the keeping of Shabbat? Il male! If only Klal Yisrael, Il male Yisrael, Shamru Shne Shabbatot. If Klal Yisrael would only keep two Shabbatot Karaui properly, Miyad Nigalim. Right away, they would be free. He says, look, you handed me the secret. Thank you. That's why you gave me the book. Now that I learned all the laws of Shabbat, and I went it over a hundred times, I'm going to keep two Shabbat perfectly here in jail. Miyad Nigalin, I'm out of here. No, 15 years, not even five months. I'm out. The rabbi looks at the prisoner and he says, uh oh. What do I tell this guy? Uh, that's not what it means. And if he's going to start getting his hopes up, and he's going to keep two Shabbat, and then he's going to be here for another 14 years, what am I going to tell him about Shabbat? What am I going to tell him about Judaism? Well, he's going to start telling me, what? what, what, what? So he, he says, listen, I, I just want to tell you that the real understanding of that Mamar Chazal is Israel is not talking about one Jew, it's talking about Klal Yisrael. Il male Israel shamru shnei shabbato. If the entire Jewish nation would keep two Shabbat karaui properly, miyad nigalim, immediately Mashiach would come. So I, I don't know if you should really bring it home to yourself the way you're doing it. He says, Rabbi, Rabbi, wait one second. That might be your girsa. That's not my girsa. I read it. Pashup shant. Il male Yisrael. One Jew. One Jew. Shamru at the Shabbat. Okay, Shamru. But Shabbatot. Shamru at the Shabbat. Shnei Shabbatot. Karaui. Miyad Nigalim. This is talking about me. Thank you, Rabbi. You're going to see. You're going to see. I know it. I can feel it. Hashem's with me. I'm keeping two Shabbat. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Rabbi said, okay. The week after that, the rabbi got sick. <laughs> you know, like me and my wife, we got COVID last week. Give out. For the second time. After two vaccines. Shukai. He got sick. The rabbi got sick the next week. And he didn't come back to the prison for a month. A month later, the rabbi comes back to the prison. And the rabbi is looking for his friend, the Baal Tshuva, the Jewish inmate. And he comes up to the cell. Ve'enenu. It's like the brother's looking for Yosef in the bar. <laughs> Ve'enenu. Where, where is he? He goes running to the warden. He says, what happened? Where is he? And he finds out that he's out. He was freed last week. He said, what? What happened? How's that possible? He had a 15 year sentence. How is that possible? I mean, I just saw him two, three weeks ago. He says, he's out. He's a free man. What happened? He says, Rabbi, I'll tell you what happened. <coughs> the Supreme Court judge that sentenced him to the 15 year sentence, he just retired. And you know the way the Supreme Court judges, when they go into retirement, they like to put out either a book or some sort of a legacy that they left behind for the years that they sat on the bench. And they sit back and they review all their big cases. You know, the big sentencing. Because those were the ones that their career was based on. And they start going through each one of them, one at a time. And when he came across this recent one, the guy that he gave 15 years to this Jewish guy, he started looking through the case again and again. And when he reviewed the testimony of the witnesses, he realized that the testimony really was inconclusive. And it wasn't as convincing as he remembered the first time. He said to himself, I'm gonna go put out a book 
They're going to review my cases that I'm going to highlight as my life medals of decisions. The justice that I stood for. They're going to come across this case and say, wait one second. This case is not so uh, glott. He says, you know what I'm going to do, said the judge? I'm going to turn this around the other way. I'm going to show that I'm a man of justice on the way out off the bench. I'm going to show that I reviewed the case and I'm going to exonerate him. I'm going to acquit him. And that's what the judge did. He put it through the system. And then the warden says he called me and told me this and this man is an innocent man. Set him free now. Israel Shamru Shneshabatot Amunapshuta Amunapshuta Ani im Abba Abba Iti Ani Bayadaim Shalab. The words of the Rambam Ani im Eloka Ve Eloka Iti the Yid HaKadosh, Eye Asher Eye, Paro cannot touch you. Reb Chaim Velazhna, En Od Milavado, say it again, say it again, you're untouchable. Miyad Nigalin, whatever it is you're going through, you'll be taken out immediately. Thank you for listening.